Howdy, everyone. Welcome to the final episode of Kefefi Break. Today is uh, March 11th, 2022. I'm Carter Laren. We will be back on Monday, just it won't be Kefefi Break. It'll be a different show, uh, which I would say the name of, but I don't think anyone else likes the working title, so maybe it'll change over the weekend. Anyway, you can watch us here on YouTube, Rumble, Utreon, Odyssey, maybe somewhere else I'm forgetting that we stream. Uh, also, our website, unsafespace.com, we always stream there. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at underscore unsafe space. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share our content with just one person. Just find a friend, share it with them if you don't want to post it online for everyone to see that you're a wrong thinker. So today, very excited to welcome welcome back Sonny Loman, who was just here uh, last week at some point. Right, Sonny? When we hey, yeah, here? I think last Friday. Last Friday. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Sonny is back. from House of Sunny. Tell everyone where they can find you. House of Sunny TV. I think my site's down for some reason right now, so I have to oh. look into that. But actually, uh, my YouTube channel is House of Sunny. And then you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram at Sunny Loman, my name. So. I see House of Sunny's loading for me. I just loaded it. So. Oh, did it? And our it's back yeah. up. It's back up, everybody. And we also are happy to have Lou Perez with us. Lou is you might remember him from We the Internet TV. Also, I think you're an, an official author now. Lou, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. I I, uh, I was also there last Friday, but nobody saw me. I was hiding. <laughs> So. Goes I was just I was just watching every now and then I like to just you watching know, and chatting us rude comments. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, that was you. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, the last time the last time I was on the show, I was not an author. And now I am an author. Uh, so if anybody's interested, um, my book is available for pre order on Amazon. So you can go and put in Lou Perez that joke isn't funny anymore on the death and rebirth of comedy. So it's it's right there for you. Awesome. Uh, when does it go officially on sale? Um, I think the official release is sometime in September. Um, okay. But I'm, I'm doing all I can to uh, uh, make that come sooner because I'm because I uh, I want it to I want it I want it tomorrow. Um, but apparently, <laughs> there's like all this stuff that needs to be done in order to put out a book. So hmm. who'd have thought? Yeah. Uh, How can they find you? How can people find you online? Um, you can check out theluperez.com or follow me on all the social media platforms at theluperez. The one cool. and only. All right, guys. The one and only. Uh, so what's bothering you guys this week? I know there's not much going on in the world at all. So um, what's bothering I just me I is came out I of my to attention bunker. to. <laughs> Yeah. Lou, have you been paying attention to this Russia Ukraine thing? I, I'm I'm that very much an outsider. I think unlike every American commenting on it, I am not an expert on either Ukraine or Russia or uh history of that of that region. Um so I mean the one thing that I that I am very certain of is that I will not be doing any fighting uh <laughs> in Ukraine against Russia or anything like that. I mean um, is that because uh, you're a coward? Yes, I'm a. I, I am a coward. No, no, I'm, I'm a special kind of coward because now, now that I'm 40, right? I don't think I'm like able to be drafted. You're not eligible anymore. Like, yeah. So, so now that's I support just a fake virtue signal. Yeah, I support every war now. It's like, yeah, we got to get you younger men and women. You got to get over there and you got to fight. And you got to do that's that. That's so crazy. <laughs> so crazy. Did you hear that? Um, that UFC fighter. Bryce, I uh, forget his last name, say, I will oh. dig my boots in the soil for Arkansas, but I'm not going to Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> I did see yeah. that. It was good. Well, that's going to yeah. be the last holdout, you know, in case the Ruskies uh, come over, you know, Arkansas. Someone's yeah, got to yeah. stay and fight. Yeah. Everyone's just going to be pushed back into uh, into Little Rock, you know. Well, did you ever well, see Red Dawn? It'll be high school students. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be. It'll Well, and Patrick Swayze. So and us old old gonna save us. Yeah. You, I noticed to Lou, I just went to your Twitter. I noticed you are a Putin apologist because I don't see the Ukrainian flag That's in right. your Twitter profile. Well well, so. uh, well well hold on. Let me uh let me show you guys. So uh just so you know, the flag might not be in my profile, but 
it's where I live and I see it every day. That's Norway. I want everybody to know <laughs> that I stand with Ukraine in my household and anybody in my household who doesn't stand with Ukraine, Is that Sweden? they got to they get out of my household. <laughs> it looks like it's Ukraine lying down and standing up superimposed <laughs> over each other. Is that what that is? There are so many people who really enjoyed this joke, and I hope anybody <laughs> watching right now enjoys this joke as well. I'm feeling bad that I don't actually know what that flag is. I think it's Norway. Am I right? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pretending that it's that it's oh, that it's Ukraine. Um, I, know I don't know either. Here. I have to look it up. Flags of the world. I'll I think I, I, I think it. that's the first prompt we're given to you know the audience out there. Can you name? Can you identify the flag? Can you identify you get, this? Flag? Everyone you get says a Sweden. Copy of Lou's book. Right. Yeah, people say Sweden. Sweden flag. Let's see. Boom! It is Sweden. All right, there we go. And you know what? The th it's 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 the thought that counts because everybody is sending thoughts over to that other part of the world, and that's all that counts. So yeah, yeah. Well, and you've got double the Ukraine going on with your flag, so you're double the virtue signaling. I, I not to say anything controversial because we never do that, but um, I think I mentioned this to Sunny privately the other day, but I'm just gonna say it publicly. I was I'm thinking say it out loud. Yeah. I was like, look, I don't, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. Uh, but the more I learn about it, the more I'm, be, I've become skeptical of the mainstream narrative. And not that Russia is the best thing ever or not guilty of propaganda. Like I've found some of that as well. But I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, if Putin invaded California, would I rather have Gavin Newsom or Vladimir Putin? <laughs> and, I, I got to be honest, I think I might be on Putin's side. <laughs> I might be like, oh, you're going to come. Like, I don't like you, but I really, really don't like who's running us now. So maybe I'm, I'm going to pick ahead. I'm going to pick the controversial side. Now, I, I'm no longer a resident of California. I, I moved out like five, six years ago, something like that. I would still pick Gavin Newsom over Vladimir Putin. I'm just look. Is that because he's handsome? People can call me a cuck. Shirt off. People can call me a cuck all they want. All right, the Kafifi uh, audience. Um, <laughs> but I'm still. I would step. I would still rather be dealing with uh, a Gavin Newsom than a uh, than a Vladimir Putin. Well, let's do the analysis. What are the advantage? Well, actually, Sonny, let's yeah. just vote. Maybe we can just democracy will win. Sonny, <laughs> I'm on the fence. I, I would like to hear both sides. Um, but I I get I get you. <laughs> you know because. Um, there's something cleaner about knowing that your government is and then being openly corrupt right. and bullish mm -hmm. compared to the behind the scenes pretend, which they're actually not doing as much as they used to. They're not pretending as much. Um, but because they have to pretend, it's probably a slightly amount. There's a little more safety in that. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know because you don't see it coming. It's just, and it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I want to, I want to hear what you guys think. I mean, I'm being facetious partly, but I, I do, I do, I do think it's nice that he's, he's one of the. I so I, I made the mistake of what not mistake. I like watching Alex Jones sometimes, but you can only have a little bit of Alex Jones because it's like, it's like eating, uh, like a really rich dessert. It's like it's not good for you necessarily all the time, but it tastes delicious sometimes, especially if you're into conspiracy theories. Um, although he's, he's right all the time. Yeah, that's the thing. He's like, now it's like, well, I don't know, maybe he is right. But I was watching, I was watching Alex Jones and uh, I, and Lee Stranahan, who's, I've been on his show and he's been here before he was making a point and, and Lee Stranahan was like, well, look, Putin is one of the only major world leaders who's overtly against the globalist great reset stuff. Like, he sees it, he knows it philosophically, and he's against it. Now, I think he's against it because he has a different plan, <laughs> right? So it's not like he's against it because he's an individualist. But Do you is, think China's not against it? They probably are. I, I think they just... I think China... I think Putin is more um, overt, and China, in classical Chinese way, is just kind of like... 
you you fall apart, West. We'll be over here just doing our thing. Like we're, you know, we're busy. We're not gonna we're not gonna make statements about it. We're not gonna get involved. We're just gonna let you. Maybe they're gonna surreptitiously fund Eric Swalwell, but or whatever. <laughs> but you know, that's about all they'll do. Um. Yeah. Beverly, I, I, the, the Beverly's gonna hang out. She's our producer, so she's gonna produce on screen for all of you today so she can yell at us if we mess up. I, I have a, I have a question for you guys. And I, I asked this, uh, um, uh, another, I was on another, uh, podcast, uh, the other night. I'm sorry. Um, it, it meant nothing to me. This, this is, this is the thing. This is the relationship that means so much. You me. promised Lou. I know. I know. I was drunk. I was in Laguna beach. <laughs> uh, but you love us. <laughs> right. For those of you who missed the talk before, uh, before we went live. Um, but something that, that, that I find, um, interesting or a little disconcerting and, and i think anytime something big happens uh you know not necessarily having a uh you know uh, you know being on the outside of it looking in seeing how people are responding uh, you know you, you start noticing things um and one of the things that i noticed was you have uh, uh is it a uh, jen saki is that how you pronounce uh, jen i Saki's think name? that's how you say it yeah uh, the other day she tweeted about um possible false flag uh, from uh, from Russia, and it's not the first time that I've heard you know someone in the Biden administration talking about false flags and uh, kind of intimating that there might be like a crisis actors or, or something like that. And I find it really strange that you know go back you know even like three years ago, and the only people talking about things like false flags and that would be like people on Infowars, Alex Jones, and and and, and that community, and now. And I correct me if I'm wrong, but this seems like the first time that I'm actually seeing, uh, you know, people in positions of authority in the United States using this language. Um, and I find that just really uh, very odd, you know. That he said that a, Alex is having such an influence on the culture, <laughs> or that because uh, well, next are we going to be talking about gay frogs and things like like as a general point of conversation it, ju it just see <laughs> i mean i mean that that would be something i mean if you know they just started you know the the uh official u.s you know uh representatives to start selling like their own uh you know growth hormones or whatever the hell supplements uh, alex is pu uh, pushing uh but it, it was just odd I, I don't know if maybe i was i was just blind to it before and it had been you know uttered before it's uh, an old term i mean i remember uh just reading about, I mean, because I read a lot of literature and stuff. There's, I remember first encountering that in the Horatio Hornblower series with the, has anybody else read that? The naval here, the English, the British naval hero, because it comes from sailing, because people would fly a flag that wasn't their own country, get close to the ship of that country, and then they would ah. ra raise their, own flag and announce, hey, no, we're actually your enemy, and then they would bomb them. So it's a, uh, it's from a, you know, the old sailing days, and I guess I've heard it in military parlance. I guess more than, probably not so mainstream though. I can't remember. I mean, I, I'm kind of, I know it's old, but I'm kind of with Lou in that. I don't remember like really high level government officials talking about it overtly, especially especially prior to an event happening like i've heard, like heard like oh that thing that happened maybe was a false flag like maybe that's the discussion but this is a case where they're like i think i've heard them do this twice now with russia at least mm -hmm. there was the one there was the one guy whose name i forget was it ned someone or nate nate someone who who was like well we russia's gonna stage a false flag operation with video cameras and blah 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 doing x y and z and the, and the reporters pushed back on him and he was they were like Where's the evidence? And he's like, I'm giving you the evidence by saying I just it. told you that's right. the evidence. Right. Yeah. So there was that. And then and then the the most recent thing that I, that there was the Jen Saki thing, but the I think that stemmed from the Victoria Newland stuff, right? There was this whole we don't have any bio research, we're not doing any bio research, that's false, blah, blah, blah. Then then Russia, <laughs> the Russian military was like, here's some documents. Uh, you are funding biological research. I looked through the documents. I don't think it's weapons, honestly. I mean, 
Russians are trying to send it as like its weapons, but based on what I see, it's it's not. But that doesn't matter. They're like, you're doing this. But then Victoria Newland gets in front of Congress and she's like, well, yes, we do. Like the, the Ukrainians have it, but it's not a bioweapon. But we're worried about it. But if Russia gets the research materials, we're worried they'll use them against us. And it's like, well, I, if it's not a weapon, how are they using it? Like, what are you talking about? And then right after that, the uh, the Department of State put out this weird tweet that was like, we do not have biological weapons. <laughs> just like, uh, uh Well, was thanks. COVID a bioweapon or was it just, I mean, it's just more of this kind of crazy research. And I, I don't know if it's true. I haven't looked carefully into it, but I heard that what they were working on was similar kind of, it was a similar program of gain of function to create diseases to then figure out how to defeat them in right. case it happens in nature, which is like the obviously how we got COVID. And so it's nuts. And I don't know, it seems like definitely something the U.S. Department of Health was interested in pursuing in many different viruses. So and, and also, like, if we're if we're being honest, right, um, the, the thought of, of biological weapons, uh, biological warfare, you know, it's really that, you know, it's talking really evil stuff there. But it's like, if the United States isn't doing it, it's like, well, shouldn't you be like the, the most powerful nation on the planet? Like. Sh shouldn't you even be researching and developing stuff you're not supposed to be developing? You know, uh, I, 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 someone I don't, I, is like China I, would, you know, and, and, and maybe I'm being a little facetious too, but it's sort of, it's sort of like, you know, staying a many steps ahead of what, uh, you know, what other, you know, evil institutions would, would happily be doing right now if they had the resources to do it. That's yeah, a I scary think thought. I mean, yeah, I get that point. But at the same time, the Chinese weren't doing it without our expertise and money. And I think Americans are just better at making stuff. And we, you know, we used to be anyway, our ingenuity and our, uh, our uh, science and our engineering. And because they couldn't do it here, they exported that and took their expertise over there and did, and it's, but so would China have done it or done it as well or as lethally without our involvement? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It's 25% a, of students here in the U S are Chinese. So maybe it is their expertise. And I mean, in China is known for making really cheap, shitty knockoffs shitty stuff. Of, of like Louis Vuitton bags. Doesn't so. work. You wonder what their knockoff bioweapons are going to be. That's like. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they escaped from labs in Wuhan as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think um, on the China front, I think what's happening, and I think a lot of maybe Westerners don't, I think a lot of us are, are kind of complacent about it. Like they were doing a lot of knockoffs, but I think in a lot of ways, they're at the forefront of a lot of research now. Like they've, they've grown up as a country and they have a vibrant, They've got more engineers probably than the entire like they've got like than definitely than us by multiple factors right like they they have they've grown they get up trained in many ways. here they get trained here and then they go yeah, back but take, yeah but it's been decades they take it back That's and train true. each other and like, like if you go nineties yeah I mean some of the technology they're developing is horrible like let's let's say the social credit system it's horrible but it's technology that we don't like but they didn't. <laughs> Develop that without U.S. assistance. I think it was. Um, I can't remember what company. I don't want to. I don't want to. Is the word purloin appropriate here? I don't want to mm. accuse a company that didn't do it. But I thought it was Google. Well, I'm sure Google may have helped with some of the facial recognition stuff or whatever. But my, I guess my point is, they there is innovation. Like if you go to a big city like Shenzhen, there is there is there is innovation for various things, whether it's evil things or or benign things like restaurants that robots serve everything or or whatever right and i'm not i don't i still think america has a lot of you know creativity and innovation going on which is you know compared to many places but i'm concerned that we'll get complacent and be like oh they just copy we don't ever have to worry about them it's like well 
there's a billion, there's 1.4 billion. Eventually, you're going to have to worry that they're not. It just would be better if we weren't helping, though. Sure. But they help us a lot. They pay for a lot of our stuff, right? I mean, they they pay for a lot of research. They pay, like, there's a lot of EB-5s. There's a lot of Chinese, you know, uh, the, the reason that there's a lot of uh, students in the U.S. is because a lot of Chinese, you know, are coming here and then doing things here as well. So, like, Again, I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to apologize for the Chinese government. What I am trying to say is like I I don't want us to become complacent with the idea that China that the people in China are somehow incapable of ingenuity. I think they were poor and they were under communism and like they were more worried about feeding themselves and they had a culture that didn't reward ingenuity, but that is starting to change in many ways and so like they're doing, I mean, there was, it was a Chinese doctor that did the whole first CRISPR edited human genome thing and like had babies that were with edited DNA. Like that's, that's happening in China. I mean, I, I don't think it was allowed, but he did it anyway. So I don't, the idea that like, we don't have to worry because we have such American exceptionalism and no one else will ever be able to out innovate us, I think is a very dangerous thought. Mm. Yeah. And, the, and, you know, obviously the, uh, you know, the pandemic showed us just uh, how dependent we are on, you know, really important things uh, coming out of China, whether it's, you know, medications and, and uh, raw materials and, and stuff like that. So, you know, as, as, you know, free market a person as I, as I am and, and laissez faire, um, you also, you know, it, it does, uh, you know, does make you question, you know, how, how safe that is you know, to, you know, to yeah. be so reliant on a, um, on, you know, while they are, they're a lot more open now, they still are, you know, very totalitarian and, and what they're, um, you know, what they're able to do. I think that is a really good political question that I honestly, I have this sort of practical side that says, I mean, I'm a free marketer too. So like, to me, anything that interferes with that is probably going to cause more harm than good in the end. But then I see what has happened over, since, you know, with China specifically over the last 30 years and how that's really harmed the United States um, financially, culturally, and um, in, in terms of security. And it, it seems like a stupid thing that we did, <laughs> but we also sort of subsidized it and we've, we, we them like cop standards and things like that like we've been kind of we have not only allowed free trade but we've kind of allowed them to cheat and allowed them to um uh you know we've sent them money and we've i, I don't know if you know this but we subsidize all of the postal shipping from china so if you order something from china you don't have to pay the shipping the u.s government pays the shipping and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we have so much of their crap and why it has become so cheap. If you had to, if the people had to manufacture over there and pay shipping, it would up the cost of the thing. And it's just a subsidy that we've, we've given to the whole Chinese market. So it isn't a free market, you know, mm. oh, I, I, I don't know how much of an impact that's had, but some um, impact. Yeah, did you watch? I think it was it Ami Horowitz uh, who made a um, a short little uh, kind of a, a, I don't know if it's a documentary or a little uh, segment uh, about that. And one of the examples that he brought up is um, if you go right now, you know, to, to Amazon and you order a product, and it's an electric product, you think you're ordering like a uh, uh, a charger, you know, for your uh, you know for your phone, and then you look and you're like, oh wait a minute, this isn't like a an Apple charger. This is something that looks just like an Apple charger. And it's, you know, it caught, but it costs you five bucks and you're like, oh, but it sucks and I need to return it. Well, if you need to ship it back to, to China, it's going to cost you, say, 12 bucks to do it. And you're like, oh, you know, you're like, screw it. For, yeah, screw <laughs> it. You know, so yeah. you, you get put you get put in those kinds of situations where, you know, it's like, why, you know, why, why bother? You're going to put yourself at a. You know, it's more money to deal with it than it is the thing yeah. cost. Yeah. Right. It's, it is hard though because we're because we're not in a free market. It's hard to say what's the cause of what and what like things would be if we were yeah. not subsidizing this person and doing that or whatever. I mean, 
my concern with the the current stuff in Ukraine. So Ch I don't know if you guys probably know this. Well, a couple of things. First, we can't make any electronic device without China, basically. Like we don't have the, the raw chips. materials. Um, and the chips are all most a lot of them are TSMC in Taiwan. Like we don't have the fabs. We don't have the, the raw materials. All the environmentalists that want to make you know, solar panels and, and wind turbines, like, well, you're like, we don't do heavy metal processing here, which they do in China, which is a horrible environmental impact thing in the local area. So like, we don't, there's a lot of stuff that we just can't do without China, like physical stuff that we could do it, but we've regulated it away and stopped doing it or, we, you know, we, we don't do it anymore. And China, you know, China made sure that outside countries did not have control over their infrastructures like they made sure that it was chinese companies that had control and i think they're looking at this russia thing now where you've got visa and mastercard and apple and everyone from you know even netflix like everyone like we're not operating in china or in uh russia and china's going well that was a good move because this is what the west is going to do to us if they don't like something we're doing they're just they're going to try and shut down our economy and we don't have as much control to do that over china so I look at this whole conflict and I, I don't see, I know the mainstream media is like, well, Putin is getting weak and blah, blah, blah. I don't see that at all. I see this. Russia is becoming more self-sufficient. They're not, they're going to need the West less after all of this. Um, they don't have debt. They're not, they're not, they're not in debt like the U S is. They don't have mountains of debt. Um, they're going to be more self-sufficient. China is patting itself on the back going, yeah, we're, we're making the right decisions. We're going to keep, we're going to keep being self-sufficient and they've already isolated a little bit uh since the covid stuff you'll have more of a russia china alliance not that they're buddy buddies but they can be allied against the west i don't see how this is making russia weaker or china weaker i it's just making creating... us weaker yeah i think so and um so. did you see that one of the uh i can't remember it's some crypto was twenty five thousand crypto accounts were taken down by the u.s somehow th via uh, through Coinbase or whatever through Coinbase again more corporate government fascism you know and for people and how does that now discredit and I honestly I've been skeptical of it from the beginning but um I don't I didn't really look into it either but it always kind of makes me nervous thinking my money is in some kind of cloud <laughs> mm. and maybe that makes me old i don't know but <laughs> i'm like that's not real and that and what worries me about it is the government can just come in and take it um i guess the government no. can come and take my actual cash too but um it's harder. it's harder it's not a flip of a switch and take you know 300 million people's cash and they of course they would do that if they had the power to do that when it suits them when well, they don't yeah, like what you're saying Canada politically did. or whatever yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, the recent uh, history just, you know, validates what so many people have been, you know, called kooks over, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, the government, uh, the government is going to come and they're going to be able to freeze your bank account. No way. Come they on. They wouldn't do That's that. A, right. And then <laughs> we see what happened um, in, in Canada. Now, yeah. the, you know, collusionary um, relationships between, you know, uh, Coinbase or even something like DuckDuckGo. Uh, saying that they're no longer going to uh, I carry, saw that. bring up, uh, you know, Russian, you know, links to that. I guess uh, I don't know if they Russian uh, propaganda. They're going to yeah. bury the links. Well, let's put in quotes. Well, yeah. Who who decides? How yeah. about let freaking me decide? I am so tired of being babied by these tech companies. Like we're little babies that need our information filtered in case we don't understand that we're reading Russian propaganda versus U.S. propaganda. I mean, I guess yeah. we are babies because most people don't realize they're reading U.S. propaganda. Yeah, here's the tweet from the the CEO. I saw that. I was so disappointed because I have moved to DuckDuckGo almost, you know, like 95% of my search because of Google and their crazy evil policies. Um, yeah. and now they're doing this and just going into this, uh, what I think of as corruption, like it's, you have a service, provide the service. Don't take a side. Don't take a political side. It's, oh. it's politics with business. And it's, I don't know, it's really, it's a dangerous game. If they're going to take a side, they should be absolutely sure. 
Well, also, you know, something like this, okay, like, you know, down ranking sites associated with Russian disinformation and, you know, Sonny, like you, like you said, you know, how, how, how do you determine that? But also we're dealing with a country that uh, so much of their prowess uh, is in hacking and, you know, stuff like that. So the idea that, you know, Russian hackers won't be able to get around, you know, this sort of thing or disseminate, uh, you know, information or disinformation, uh, I think is, is kind of silly. And then, I mean, it might, you know, tell somebody like, well, you know, I'm using DuckDuckGo, they're not going to show me any disinformation, Russian disinformation. So I guess if something's coming up, it's been vetted and I could believe this, you know, I think yeah. that just adds way too more, you know, uh, just way too much, uh, you know, confusion or, uh, you know, reliance on the system as opposed to, uh, okay, this, you know, thing came up, maybe you could, you know, give me a disclaimer, like, oh, it's, it, uh, just so you know, the home base is in Moscow. Oh, okay, so maybe I'll read it with, you know, a, with a few more grains of salt than I normally would. But I think it's important to, to, to even be able to see what, uh, you know, if there's disinformation coming out, what does it look like? Yeah. What is the narrative that's being pushed here? Yeah. How how and, would I be able to respond to that? And you know? it's such a first step. I mean, we've seen this as a first step toward a full censorship too, where, um, you know, you start small and it seems reasonable. Oh, we don't want these expert propaganda bots to get their search, you know, up to the top. And so we're going to kind of downgrade it because we know that's just propaganda. But again, like you were saying, Lou, it's like, well, now you've taken this responsibility to basically assert that your search is not only, you know, relevant, most relevant, but which is sort of your job, <laughs> but you're going to make sure that it's true. And it's like, now you have this responsibility to do that. And that's where it just becomes an avalanche of how do I know it's true? Well, then I got to listen to the experts. Well, the experts are the, the system, the, the guy, it ends up being the government or the media. Let me just read this you know? tweet first for people who are only listening. It's from the CEO of DuckDuckGo, and it says, like so many others, I am sickened by Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the gigantic humanitarian crisis it continues to create. Hashtag stand with Ukraine. At DuckDuckGo, we've been rolling out search updates that downrank sites associated with Russian disinformation. One of the things that bothers me about this stuff, guys, is um, I, I don't doubt. So like I said, I looked at, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, I looked at, uh, I looked at the stuff from the Russian military that they put out about the bioweapons. I do think it was like some of it was a gotcha for the U.S. The U.S. did lie. Uh, and it was spun in a way that I, that I think was misinformation. Like, I don't think it was what the Russian military says it was, which which I think is the point for me. Like, this is the thing that's frustrating we shouldn't really trust us information either we like why are we suddenly when did the media and and i'm considering this a, a media cuz media is online now and this is how people research and get information when did when did the media think that parroting whatever the us stance was on anything is the truth they did it with uh we saw in the in the movie hoax they did it with uh hillary clinton's <laughs> sickness like oh when cernovich asked uh, Scott, whatever his name was, like, how do you know she had pneumonia? Well, the campaign said, like, oh, that's the end of the. They 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 did it with that. They they do it with um, all of these narratives about Ukraine, um, and a lot of times they're the exact opposite thing that was said three years ago or two years We're ago or a couple months ago. We're on the of two ma two major major prop three major propaganda campaigns, RussiaGate, right for three years. Yeah. Then. Uh, then um covid and yep. then the january 6th thing in the elections like that whole like don't question don't question don't question don't look at it don't don't we're not even gonna audit that's like what are you crazy what these are the safest elections ever and <laughs> you know it's not i'm not saying one way or the other i'm saying why can't we talk about it <laughs> right and now this right yeah they've lost all credibility so this idea i i guess it's maybe naive of me because I don't think this was ever true. But there was this idea that like, well, because we have, quote, free speech here, because we're allowed to kind of 
talk about whatever, we can hold our own government accountable as well as seeing here's what China's propaganda is. Here's what Russia's propaganda is. Here's what the CIA is saying. Here's what our my elected officials are saying. I can you know, I might not get it right, but I have access to all the information very clearly. And 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 we're going to treat everything with uh, uh, some amount of skepticism. And that has completely vanished, vanished the left. And, and not just the left, specifically major media companies have gone all in on whatever the deep state says is true is true. And I'm not using deep state in the conspiracy way. I just mean, you know, whatever the establishment says is true is true. And you're not allowed to question. Look at anything else. We're going to take down. They took down. Uh, Oliver Stone has an excellent documentary called Ukraine on Fire. It's I highly recommend it. It's an awesome documentary. It was made a few years ago. So it's not about this current crisis. But it's awesome. It's and it's and it's Oliver Stone. This is not a right wing dude. It's Oliver Stone. <laughs> Oliver Stone he, is a is a supported the communists in Venezuela. Right. It's, so it's all it's an awesome documentary on Ukraine. Gone. YouTube took it down. A lot of people have uploaded it back to YouTube. So maybe YouTube's gonna play whack-a-mole now. But they took it down the other day because they don't want you seeing you can still see it on Vimeo, but they don't want they you don't seeing want it. You and it's understanding crazy. the situation. They don't right. want you thinking for yourself at all. It's so freaky. And the fact that like this DuckDuckGo president is more pissed off about Putin and Ukraine than that. Right. What's happening in our own country to our own citizens. Or like, for example, remember when this Ukraine thing started, it was literally the day after Trudeau declared martial law in Canada <laughs> and was seizing right. bank accounts and stuff. And I'm supposed to care. I mean, I'm supposed to care about Ukraine after that, that happening in Canada. Right. And and American bank accounts being seized because they I don't know if it was American side, Canadian bank accounts being seized because just because they gave to a charity that they wanted to give to not even they weren't even like a trucker people who just gave 20 bucks. Right. And then the truckers being trampled by horses and like, I'm sorry, this is really horrible. What's happening on top of all the covid tyranny. Maybe and they then, paid Putin to increase. Can you invade Ukraine now? I know you are not planning on doing it right now, but we are in a world of shit and we need the narrative. Yeah, we need a distraction. <laughs> well, they were goading him to do it. They were. Uh, I mean, like there were the whole week leading up to it. All Biden was saying was he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I'm telling you, he's going to do it. I'm like, OK. Yeah. Well, uh, as as a as a geopolitical move, it seems like a it seems like a massive fuck up on his part, though. Right. On Putin's part? On Putin's part to to have invaded. I mean, uh, I don't think and, so. I think no? he'll come out think stronger and, and they'll be better. Yeah. Yeah. Be, I, I think I think for him, I think for him in Russia, it will be fine because I think what was happening is, again, I'm not I'm not. This is not moral judgment. Like I'm an anarchist. War is bad. I don't believe in the initiation of the use of force. Like I like separate all that for a moment. I'm not giving him moral. Uh, I'm not I'm not applauding him morally, but. From his perspective, uh, look, the West the West was encroaching. They were getting more and more threatening. They were getting more and more belligerent. U Ukraine wasn't about to join NATO anyway. No one no one wanted Ukraine to join NATO. And the U.S., all they had to do was say, yeah, he, they won't join NATO. That's fine. They wouldn't do it. They, like, like, like little brats, they dug their heels in. And, like, we're not saying that Ukraine won't join NATO. I'm like, all right, well, like, if you look at how NATO has expanded since uh, the Soviet since the promise that they wouldn't expand uh, and you and you put your you put the Russian hat on and you imagine that you're a Russian and you watch this and watch what's been going on. It's like, well, I do kind of feel threatened. Like if 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 Russia was like our alliance now includes England, now Venezuela, now Brazil, now Mexico and Canada, like, <laughs> like uh, that's a little bit. And we're going to put missiles in Quebec. That's scary. And and it's understandable. And the other thing that's being the, the thing that I think is eye opening about just researching this stuff a little bit. So I'm going to relate this to Antifa for a minute. Sorry, I'm on a rant. I'm just this is I've been I went down a rabbit hole last night. Have you ever has anyone read the Antifa handbook? Have you have you looked at the history of Antifa? A little bit. I haven't read the handbook, but Antifa I think started... I've read parts of it. So yeah, so Antifa was European. I think it was in Germany in uh, prior to the rise of the Yahtzees, we'll call them. Right prior to the prior to the rise of the Yahtzees, 
And in in Europe, there is a false dichotomy. I think Americans think that like it's I think it's unique almost in America that we think, well, there's fascism and there's Marxism, but there's other stuff. We can have this other like there's a third alternative in Europe, especially at that, especially in Germany at that time. And I think in a lot of Europe, they're stuck in a false dichotomy mentality. If it's not fascism, it's Marxism. Like those are the options. So Antifa calls themselves Antifa. They're anti-fascists. But the reason that they're all Marxists is because that's the only – if you are not Marxist, you are by definition fascist. That's what they believe, and they will say it outright. Are you a Marxist? No. Then you're a fascist. There's no other option. And if you look at Ukraine post-World post, post uh, World War II, I've, I've got one of these – Elle got me doing the graph comments thing that she showed the other day. I've been graphing these <laughs> these people uh, in in Ukraine, and you can see the U.S. the CIA hid actual Nazis um, from Ukraine because what happened after the end of World War II is we were concerned suddenly about socialism, so the Nazis were our friends, and like we hid a bunch of Ukrainian Nazis all around Europe. Uh, one of the, a big one is uh, Stefan Bandera. From Ukraine, and if you if you look at the people that we have placed in power, and I won't get into the details, but in in 2014 when we Victoria Newland and and Jeffrey Pratt had that call that was intercepted by Russia and played, and and they were setting up the new Ukrainian government through this kind of revolution that we orchestrated. The people she's talking about, you can it's all public. You can look into them. She talks specifically about Yats. That's a guy named uh, Arseniy Yatsenyuk. He is from the Fatherland Party. Uh, like he is like they are Nazis. They are um, maybe not German Nazis, but they're anti-Semitic nationalist. Like they are anyone in the U.S. I mean, we they call Trump people Nazis here. They are they're actual Nazis. Like there's actual Nazism. There's actual, you know, crazy Nazism. And and we just I didn't know like about it doesn't this. Exist. I didn't know about this you know, false dichotomy, because we don't really have that. But maybe this is explains the left and the way they're always calling a anyone, any Republican a Nazi. Right. It's been kind of get like George Bush was called a Nazi. And he's just part of the freaking neoconservative establishment, which I think of as communist. If, if it has anything, it leans toward, you know, socialism. Um, yep. Uh, that's a really interesting, and, and but it's all like obviously what's happened is there's been a merger of fascism and communism, and, and one I guess allows corporations to be a part of that, and the other one doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I think one has this idea that there can be corporations, but we want to tell you what to do because we're fascists. And the other one has this idea that like the corporations will just like eventually disappear. Merge. And the government it just will merge it with the government because yeah. government will run the companies, which is effectively kind of the same thing. It is. But if you know, but if you look at, I think the, I think if you look at the history of the CIA and I've, I haven't, I'm not an expert here, but like, it makes sense given what you see them do in Afghanistan and elsewhere for the past several decades is in their effort to fight the commies. They align with horrible, horrible people. They arm, they arm radical Muslim extremists. They arm Nazis. They train them. They do this. And, and in Ukraine, it was the Nazis that we aligned ourselves with. We didn't care that they ran. They took tiki torches to the street. I mean, like they did everything they could do to show they were Nazis, and and we were aligning with them because we didn't like the idea of. The Russians having a relationship with you didn't want we didn't want the Russians there. And that was the only alternative. The people that hated Russia were the nationalists. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm glad yeah, that I we uh like that. <laughs> I'm glad that we are arming them further. And and actually I kind of feel sorry for that side too. I I was listening to a commentator say the other day, and it made some sense that um we've sort of caused this whole mess and there are people dying <laughs> in Ukraine. And yeah, I guess the Ukrainian they're not people these, are but I mean, they're dying. And they are, no, I mean, a lot of the Ukrainian people that are dying are just stuck in the middle. The yeah. U S is using Ukraine as a, uh, a tool. And we, we don't give a crap about the people unless, unless showing dying Ukrainians on television 
will f help our agenda in some way, in which case we'll do that. And, well, and the whole uh, you know, the whole NATO expansion is like a whole nother ball of wax. The only person I ever heard say anything in my entire life, the only politician I've ever heard say, do we really need NATO <laughs> is Donald Trump. Right. right. And NATO expansion seems crazy to me. Like if, if you're talking about a group that's supposed to prevent these world wars, which NATO is supposed to do to add more countries and make it even more like a world war one situation where someone gets offended. And next thing you know, we have to jump in and fight and cause they're in NATO. Could, could, could I, um, could, could I pose something when, when you guys are, uh, and this, I guess is a, a, an admission on my part, I kind of where my, uh, uh, where I may have changed. I don't know. Let me explain it. And then I'll, you guys could help me out. Um, so I have this growth. No. So um, <laughs> it, it's not a first It's not a bad thing. Um, so, so uh, you know, over the past, you know, few weeks, uh, social media has been filled with pictures of uh, Ukrainians, grandmothers, uh, beautiful women uh, being armed to the teeth, you know, and, and, and having, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rifles and ready to roll and, uh, the government is going to be, you know, giving out uh, ammunition and, and artillery and, and all that. And, you know, the American in me, the American anarchist in me is uh, very rah, rah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Yeah. This is your this is your homeland. You're ready to defend it. Yeah. Uh, and then I and then as time has gone by, I've you know, been hearing, you know, commentary from people who have, uh, you know, way more knowledge about military and strategics and guerrilla warfare and that sort of thing. And just talking about like, well, but what does that look like? You know, what do street fights look like where you have um, a, you know, an armed, you know, uh, armed civilians going up against a, you know, a military. There's a lot of bloodshed that that's going to be. There's a lot of people who are going to, you know, uh, when they should be running, they're going to be, you know, perhaps firing on tanks when they should be getting the fuck out and and yeah. recouping and 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 and, and regrouping. Uh, so there, there's there's been something at least the I guess the admission is that I was very more of like a rah rah, but then the gravity of the situation just kind of dawned on me, and I was like, whoa, that is this is like this is a lot of lives uh, that we're, that we're going to be you know uh, talking about here. Um, so, Especially when you realize how muddle, muddied the whole thing is and how we are maybe involved and you feel like this is just a big chessboard for these people and we're sort of a part of it and we're – and do did Ukrainians really want to be a part of NATO so bad they'd risk war with Russia and did – now that you know, yeah, is it right to arm grandmothers and <laughs> women and children? And I mean, yeah, I totally had the same kind of evolution. And then listening to people say, uh, I one commentator in particular saying, We're this is the Ukrainians are paying the price, and we're all over here going, Yay, rah, rah, and we're sort of egging them on to, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they want, I think they should do what they want, but. I don't think we should be involved in watching us be involved is just kind of making me sick. It's it's well, and it's uh, it's increasing the bloodshed, right? Because for it's a game to us, especially, you know, people like us who aren't. Oh, we can be so morally righteous over not, here right, in our safe like, oh, country. Or, yeah, and, right. Yeah. Oh, you should do that. And it's woohoo. Go grandma with your gun. Like, like, okay, that's great. Exactly. <laughs> no Sweden. Yeah. Double, double Ukraine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> listen, so, there was, like, I have to yeah. share this tweet that I saw. I, I, I know Beverly can't put it on the screen, but I'll just read it. It says, I can, if you, you could uh, probably you, hit the share button, yeah, you can hit you the share probably. button and then, and then I can yeah. place it on screen. All right. Share screen. Now don't look at my private stuff. <laughs> You've already you made the mistake. The Dang it. I know. Just okay, while you're doing that, is. this in, bloodshed's going to increase here because uh, if Ukraine knew they were on their own and that America was never going to get into a hot war with Russia, they might have different negotiation strategies and they might accept yeah. different things from Russia. But right now, we're we're giving them all. We're like leading them on, you know, like yeah, yeah, fight. Here's some. Here's this. Here's some guns. And there's like this we're not quasi. Do this. Yeah, there was this quasi. We might support you. We might declare a no a no fly zone. Like. 
I feel like it's all just a, it is a game to our leader or they have an agenda that doesn't involve Ukrainian people surviving. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something mm -hmm. else, whether it's to distract us from everything that's been going on or it's to further destroy our dollar and, and trust in our institutions and push us into digital currency, which I heard someone else say, you know, it's like, they're definitely, and, and that sounds nuts, but they've actually written it down in books that this is their plan and they've had like seminars. So, I mean, and these are the people in power. So of course, why don't we take them at their word? It's like when a Muslim, you know, takes down a building with a plane and he shouts Allahu Akbar, we're supposed to go, well, I don't, you know, we don't know what the motivation was. It's just kind of right. like that. Like we're just ignoring what they're actually saying and pretending like they're not evil. So this tweet says, as much as I hate the American gun and violence mentality, if someone went for my bike, I'd sure like to have a, po a pocket American handy. And then another guy responds, you've just explained NATO. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So NATO. expanding NATO is just making us more embroiled in these little countries that have nothing to do with us. That's well, and my look, little NATO, rant. NATO was formed to fight the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union dematerialize it like it's gone can, can so we talk, oh, yeah go can let's we talk, can talk a little, little bit want. just you know um so this growth no um <laughs> so you know when it comes to people calling for you know no fly zones um not not understanding like the uh uh you know the severity of that you know and how like that's you know you're basically going to be in a hot war you know when, when that happens right. it it has been very strange to to hear people talk about on um, putin being the type of person who's willing to actually launch nukes right like having him described that way by the same people who are saying yeah let's get into a war with this guy right it's just it's like, it's like wait, <laughs> he's crazy and he's gonna launch nukes yeah. we should have a no-fly zone that we enforce I mean, just think of it. it's like if you had, you know, like, OK, there's the there's the, you know, the bully on the playground. And look, I know if I fight this bully in the playground one on one, uh, you know, I might leave with a split lip or something. But that's what it's going to be. Not. Yeah. He also has like a fucking, you know, uh, explosives on his chest. And if I fight him, he's going to pull it where he's going to fucking blow blow us both up. It's like that changes how I'm going to approach the situation. You know, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to school. I think you're like, a bully done, apologist. You know? you're, that right, makes me right, a bully exactly. apologist. <laughs> um, I wonder if it's the language because, you know, if you say, oh, this crazy guy's going to launch nukes. Oh. Zone, you know, it's just, a, but instead, we're not saying we're just going to shoot down some Russian planes. Can That's what we're that? gonna do. Um, Sonny, sorry, you, you froze for a little bit. Can we hear you. I, I said, instead, we're saying versus the crazy guy with nukes. We're saying we're just gonna have a, a little no-fly zone. Like it just doesn't have any death in that <laughs> language. Yeah. But if you, what's really happening is we're gonna shoot down Russian planes. Yeah, no, no fly zone sounds like. Yeah, everybody hates going to the airport and TSA. And it's just <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Like we yeah. won't have to deal with that. Okay. You yeah. won't have to deal with that for just a little bit. You know, yeah. It does the sound Russians like that. just yeah. won't be able to fly internationally for a couple of they weeks. We can't get through security. It are, yep. It's fine. Jo was it yeah. Joy Behar? Was it, did you just bring up Joy Behar? Yeah. yeah. Be able to go to <laughs> no, did she say that? I did not intentionally. She did. did she say that? Yeah, she's been trying to go to Italy for four years. And first it was COVID that, that, uh, now this Ukraine now, war. And now, who knows if she'll ever get to go to Italy? Oh, poor Joy. Yeah. That's what she actually said on TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about her and her travel. <laughs> I, I didn't get to see Florence because Ukrainians are dying. Oh, my gosh. There might be um, World War III, and I'm not going to get to go. To actually, it, this, the sad thing is, is I think about stuff like that. I'm just as shallow as her. I'm like, the world is getting less and less safe. There are places I may never get to see. <laughs> Yeah, they're, I don't feel are. bad for the people that live in those places. I mean, can, I feel can bad for me that I'm going to miss seeing, like, say, the pyramids or something. I'll tell you <laughs> what: if if I could pick a bunker in Tuscany to just live out and just have you have you have a wine, wine. cellar that under goes on forever, yeah, under a vineyard. I mean, come on, that's the I way to not. live. That's that's the that's way to live. Yeah, that's the way to live out this thing. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, we'll have to take a boat though. <laughs> 
Can we? I I know we've been on the Ukraine thing for a while, but there's one like there's one uh, related thing that I think is is horrifying that I, I we haven't talked about, and I saw this yesterday. We've already had this. Uh, we've already like gotten close to treating Russians as Japanese mm. during World War II. Here, we've already talked about like, hey, maybe we should kick Russian students out of college and round them all up, right? <clears throat> Germany, <clears throat> there's a clinic, a medical clinic in Germany that announced they were ostracizing. They're not going to treat Russians or Belarusians uh, at their clinic in Germany. Um, and I, w- what's fascinating to me as is, okay, okay, people never think, they always think it can't happen here. That was Germany and blah, 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 and, and World War II. And we, we would never do that. And like, that's dumb enough. But this is Germany again doing like, hey, we're going to separate people based on ethnicity and ostracize them from our society. And no one is talking. No one's like, uh, guys, yeah, you, t- you took a wrong turn in Berlin. What's going on? You know what's no so funny cares. about that? How many years or decades have you been hearing from the Germans themselves in documentaries and various TV shows and stuff about how they have this guilt how they still feel like they're making up for what happened, you right. know, <laughs> like We're it's gonna cultural make up that they feel bad. Russian and and here we are. And they're the same freaking people. Yeah. It, 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 it reminds me, uh, you know, like during, during COVID, you know, the amount of, you know, Chinese Americans who were beaten up or harassed because of COVID. It's like, it's 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 sort of like i i don't i don't understand that mentality i don't know how someone can connect the dots and think that you know a chinese person who's taking the f train is somehow responsible for for this friggin' pandemic or or the idea yeah. like oh there's that one um orchestra that won't be playing what tchaikovsky or something like right. that but because what i it, it 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 makes absolutely no sense and you know uh, you know back during um uh, well, you know, you know, the war on terror, you had the the morons who wanted freedom fries. It's like there's there's like, right. what is the difference here? This is it's, it's uh, you know, and the other no thing difference. that's so, such a contradiction about it is they're saying Putin is so bad. He's such a such a dictator. Let's get the Russian people. <laughs> it's like, right. If he's a dictator, uh, it's not their fault. They don't right? really yeah. have any control, <laughs> especially the ones that don't live there. Who live in other countries? Could, it's could we, crazy. Could, could we just talk about just for a second, like how you know, uh, you know, Putin, the, the stuff that he does. I uh, the amount of people he has poisoned with like plutonium, right? Like this is like really James <laughs> yeah. Bond, James Bond villain shit. He's ex KGB. Yeah. How the fuck? Like, but out of all the choices, like, like you know, I, I get like a gun. I get even uh, a, a knife or or a uh, you know. Uh, a, a hypodermic needle with you know with with death inside it you know i can go around down with the things that lou will use to kill people yes a, pia- a, a, a rope in a prison cell yeah needle. or piano wire you know i, a I get suicide yeah, I yeah, get that yeah exactly the camera gets disconnected and he hangs himself in his prison cell yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. you know? much cleaner much 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 less diabolical yeah. <laughs> assassination <laughs> well you had a point you were gonna you just yeah i i just I, there's uh i i don't think uh, i don't think we, we should forget just the level of you know what that what that kind of uh menace is you know a person who was willing you know to to do that to take out uh his enemies like that um I, to I, take I, out I, his I, enemies not normally but like with this crazy scary thing yeah. That, yeah, that like, is totally well, like you freaky. go, you know, you go to a, you go to a hotel and you're like, yeah, you know, I hung out with Putin tonight. I thought things were going well. Then I go back to my room and I'm glowing in the dark. And I'm like, yeah, what my skin f- started to fall off. Yeah, what's going? <laughs> yeah, from the handshake, I thought he was really strong, but no, it, it it's on my shoulders now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. look, I, here's the thing. Um, first of all, because he's ex KGB, I'm sure, like he, this is. They, they have all the cool ways to kill people, right? So he's got to use them, right? Oh, but the polonium, plausible deniability. Let's polonium, let's put polonium in the guy's tea, right? Um, but I, the thing that I think, I, I just remember when I, when I think of Putin, I think, okay, yeah, he's doing these things, but I think the reason that the Russian people actually have liked him in the past, I mean, he's been 
he's been president for a while in Russia. And I don't think he could have maintained that without people liking him there. And I think he was, I don't know if he still is, but I think he was liked there. And I think it's because he cares about Russia first. Like he, that's, he's very clear. He cares about Russia's interests and that's what he cares about. And so, you know, I, I, I get it. But then when I look at like what the U S government does, okay, we don't polonium kill people. Although maybe we do. Um, the, the thing with Russia is like, it's all blamed on Putin. But the thing with the U S is where this multi-headed Hydra, where this giant bloated, we've got much more money, a much bigger state, a much, a much more diffuse, you know, security apparatus all over the globe, doing nasty things, starting color revolutions, killing people in a whole bunch of ways or goading people to kill people in a bunch of ways. So I don't know, like it makes him bad, but in comparison, I don't think it, I don't look at that and go, wow, he's so much worse than the guy who orders the CIA to start a revolution in a country or so much worse than, than the guy, than, than Hillary Clinton, who was, I mean, Epstein and, and other deaths aside, then Hillary Clinton, who who had Libya, who 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 pushed Libya into a revolution. And now there's an open air slave trading market in Libya and a whole bunch of people died. And it's much worse for all the Libyan people. Like, I'd rather she have just killed someone with polonium. You're sounding a lot like uh, Donald Trump when he was running for president. He's like, hey, we've killed a lot Lock of people, too. We've killed a <laughs> lot of journalists. Do you know, it's hard. I'm it's not so saying it's hard. right. It, it's so hard because I I don't want to be like that moral relativist who's like, well, the U.S. is just as bad. I, I don't believe that. No. But, um, but we have to start facing the reality that in a way we've had our own kind of sly behind the scenes revolution and that the people running things are not good people. There is this and, and it's not Republican, Democrat. It's the same party. It's the same group of people and it is vicious and it's up to us to fix it and set it right and put it back to what I think of as American values. So, but you know, when, when Epstein can be murdered in his cell, we all know he didn't kill himself when that can happen in a federal prison, the cameras go out, the guards like, what the hell, what kind of power is that? And it and, happened again with another person connected to the case. Same yeah. thing. Who was it? I mean, uh, that's some serious power. Yes, and they're right, not even right. hiding it. Like, they know that we'll all know. They didn't try to – he didn't have a heart attack. He got – you know what I'm saying? Like, they're yeah. not even uh, – they're not really hiding it because uh, they know I'm, they're protected. And look what look what all those people did just to Trump and Trump's administration and, like, what they did to Flynn. And it, – be this made up fake thing but who did all that like one guy got his pension you know comey wrote a best-selling book he's a hero to, to half the country um people don't care right so i hope to follow it's uh, scary i hope to follow james comey and, and sell a, a, a bestseller uh that Love joke isn't that. funny anymore by Lou Perez. Do you know, available now for pre-order on amazon <laughs> you, you will have to uh screw someone over really bad uh, someone on the right. I'm ready. I am then ready. You'll have a bestseller. I am so ready. Oh, well, you know, just to, uh, I don't know if this lightens the the mood a little bit, but, uh, you know, what was it yesterday? Uh, Jesse Smollett. Well, was oh sentenced. my God. And that was wait, so the, great. Can we play the video? Yeah, I yeah, have to play the video. video. That was I, I can't so great. Do it, justice, so. <laughs> it is so <laughs> this, good. This is so well related to what we were just talking about. Oh my God. Hold on. Let me, let me pull it up here. Uh, does everybody, does your YouTuber? audience know who Just, Jesse Smoulet? You know, one of the best all time comedy bits, Lou, is Chappelle's Jesse Smoulet <laughs> uh, bit. Am I right? Well, 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 this is how this is how ridiculous Jesse Smollett, uh, Smollett or Juicy Smollett. I think that that's Juicy how we call Smollett. it. This is how ridiculous like this whole this whole hoax was, <laughs> right? All all Dave Chappelle had to do was just recount the details of the hoax. Like if you go and you watch that again, uh, aside from him, at, you know, giving him, uh, you know, juicy smolet, it's yeah. him just, you know, being a rational human being, yeah. just recounting what happened. It was just yeah. so ridiculous. But the, yeah, uh, uh, Carter queued up the uh, the sentencing, right? 
<laughs> this is so good. Yeah, he gets sentenced. Let's he, he listen. Gets, so the sentencing, before he does this, what's happened is the judge has read out the sentence, and he, he's getting 150 days in prison, and and then he says, do you have anything to say or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything to say? He, it's not a lot of, I mean, 150 days in prison, and it's, apparently it's a really bad, it's one of the worst prisons in the country, but okay, here we go. Do you have any questions? No, I would just like to say to Your Honor that I'm, uh, I'm not suicidal. <laughs> That's what I would like to say. Okay. I'm not suicidal. Okay? I am not <laughs> suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. Yeah. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of Black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not suicidal. <laughs> I, I, I feel like i feel like he's he's quite capable of actually faking his own suicide where oh my god I feel like he is. and blame yeah blaming someone else for just like, so he can like, go like, down with a bigger bang you know or, or like he he fakes the suicide in that you know uh like he's still living but he tries to persuade everybody convince everybody that he's actually dead he's dead yeah. I, I have been murdered <laughs> Your Honor, I have been murdered. You cannot put me in the prison because I am no longer alive. I have been racism murdered. killed me. Yeah, yeah. Well, if well, I well, pretended to be murdered, I only did it to draw attention to LGBTQ struggles. Right. What what happened right. to the two to the two uh, brothers, literal brothers, who he hired to uh, uh, to beat him up that night? Or there's or, no or, crime or, there. No, no, right? but like. Oh. I, 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 I want to hear what these they? guys have oh, to yeah. say. You know, why? Well, I, I think that they aren't interviewed because the the establishment was pro Jesse. The optics are just awful. You know, it's just uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I had part a, of me wants to say he's got something on Hillary Clinton because that's the only reason that I would stand up in court and say I'm not suicidal. But I don't <laughs> think I don't think so. I think he is. I when you guys watch that, do you think he believes his own thing? I think he's like. I think he's got some mental disorder. I think he believes yeah. the story. He said the story and he like he's invented the fantasy and he honestly believes this fantasy now. Cluster B man. We this need is, to have Josh on to explain it to us. This is the this is the role of a lifetime. Like he has created True. this role and he is all in and and uh yeah. Double down on Yeah, the I think he's nuts. Yeah. I think it's like extreme narcissism, maybe or something. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely it's delusional. Lou, I don't want to, you're welcome to stay, but I know you said you had an hour and I don't want to keep you if you have to go. I so. I, I appreciate it. maybe like five five more minutes if that's uh, if that's cool. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Okay, um, cool. I just, yeah, I just wanted to make sure we weren't um, yeah. doing the, the thing. Did you see, um, <clears throat> I guess, uh, where was it? Let me look. Facebook. I know we I know we we veered away from Russia, but I, there's one more thing. Did you see Facebook said they're gonna allow violent claims for violence against Russians now? Yeah, what's that? What what? Yeah, what is that about? Um, if you could explain that to me, I've seen the the headlines. I'm just only by Black Nigerians, though. Yes. Only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they basically they're saying that uh, against. If it's related to Ukraine, so like I don't think you can call for violence against your Russian neighbor in, you know, New Jersey. Well, that's but, a relief. Um, yeah, uh, unless maybe if they're the son of an oligarch or something, you can do that. Um, but you can call for violence if you're talking about like Russians in 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 Ukraine or whatever. You can call you can call for violence. You're allowed to have calls for war which it's just so it's just so odd to me because this is the company that like they called they called trump's january 6th speech a call to violence which it wasn't they and they, they this is the same company that's like this is an interaction we can't have this blah 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 it's violence it's violence it's violence and now they're like oh yeah you want to kill some russians sure you can call for violence yeah we're in the on this metaverse the will that still hurt if i'm if i'm like beat up in the metaverse 
you know what? That might be the way that, you know, patriotic Ukraine loving Americans could actually make an impact is like they go into the metaverse, they take up arms and that's where they vanquish, uh, you know, Russian <laughs> invaders. That. Yeah, that would work. I, I think I can. Nothing I'm for, real anymore. I, I'm 40. I, I think I can get involved in that war. Right? Can we get out our aggressions and angers by going into the metaverse and and going to war for Ukraine? That one, that war is allowed, but not the other wars that maybe they don't like. And I guess yeah, Facebook right. decides which wars sides. that they like right. and which wars they don't like. Right. Right. And I'm sure there's another war going on in the world today we don't know about. <laughs> you think? Like somewhere in Africa. Oh, no, yeah. Yemen. Yemen, that's right. Can we fight for Yemen? Yeah. They're not white, so we don't care. <laughs> what was that? Some some host said something like that the other day like, "Oh, you feel for the Ukrainians because they're, you know, they're they're uh, That they're was like the us. 16, they're like a first world project country. woman. What's her name? Really? Yes. Oh, wow. She's the one who said that. The only reason you all care about Ukraine is because they're white. Oh, no, no. I mean, there was a white anchor on mainstream media who said, well, the Ukrainians are kind of like us. They're not like some of the third world countries. Like, they they said oh, that. He was overtly. actually saying that's exactly why he cares. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I forget who it was, but they were like, yeah, well, it's it's, it's particularly difficult for us because the Ukrainians are kind of like us. They're kind of like, a, you know, not a third world country. And like, oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, I see. Thank you for that. Uh, Death and, someone... and, and horror is fine as long as you're not yeah. white. Uh, for my for my bachelor party, I went to Miami, and uh, my, uh, uh, my my friends we we rented a cabana, and uh, with that you get uh, you know waitresses who you know um, take care of you, you know for you drinks and, and all that. Take care and there was of you. A, yeah, take care of you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been to a place like that, but it was no. Yeah. no so one of them, was one, of them was, one of them was <laughs> was. was uh, uh, one of them, I, I asked her where she's from, and she said she's from uh, Russia. And uh, and then after talking, it turned out she was actually from from Ukraine. But she, I guess, she identified that she was, you know, from Russia or something like that. And uh, she was gorgeous, gorgeous lady. But yeah, uh, that's a what a way for me to end my appearance on this uh, <laughs> Russian, wonderful Russian chicks wonderful are show. hot. Yeah, so Lou just yeah. described his bachelor party and having a beautiful waitress yeah. from Ukraine. Let's call your wife know. and find yeah. out how she feels about yeah. that. Well, I mean. Uh... <laughs> you know what? You're just trying to make up for your gay bar comment earlier before yeah, everybody that, which, heard which that. Which was not recorded. It was not recorded. True. Look, sometimes now Lou everyone just knows gets about drunk. it, Sonny. Yeah. Sometimes Lou just gets drunk and just, you know, just goes and gets up on the bar at a gay bar and just <laughs> and just does stand up comedy. You know how it is. <laughs> at least you don't sniff people's hair. But you know what about you know uh, you know what that anchor said, I think it's very uh it's very revealing. You know it's it's very telling, but you know I, I do imagine I, I do think about that though, you know because we you know we are at war with so many on so many different fronts where you know how much does you know being able it, does the distance from those who are impacted by war just make it easier to just go about your day uh, as opposed to taking to the streets and, and all that? And, and what impact does it, does it have when, Oh yeah, that person actually, you know, kind of looks, uh, you know, looks like me versus, you know, someone who looks very, uh, very different. Um, so. It's a good question. And when you look at duck, duck, go being outraged at like say Putin invading Ukraine, but, had no problem with us invading Libya. Does that have so like maybe right. that person would have a problem if we'd invaded uh, Ukraine? Canada or Ukraine or, <laughs> you know, Bosnia? I don't know. Mm. It's a good question. Yeah. I, I don't think the answer is necessarily racism. I think it's geopolitics. And I think Ukraine is politically important to the U.S. It's strategically important to the U.S. And so that's why we whip up everyone into a frenzy over it. But some of these other places are just less. What's going on in Africa is less strategically important. So we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to show the pictures. We don't have to show all the sob stories. We don't have to have flags of African countries in our profile because it's not. Um, it's just not in the geopolitical interest of the United States to to push that narrative. 
right? They've got something else they want to sell. Yeah. And, so. and speaking of selling, um, I do have a book that's available now. On <laughs> Amazon. Uh, Lou Perez, that joke isn't funny more on the death and rebirth of comedy. And uh, Carter, uh, Beverly, uh, Sonny, thank you guys so much uh, for having me. I, I wish I could have stayed uh, longer. This is really fun. And, Good to uh, see you, Lou. I can't wait to see, see everything that, that you guys have uh, coming down the road. So much appreciation. Um, thank you for joining us. It was great to, great to have you. Um, and I'm sure we'll have you back. But uh, yeah, go, go, everyone yeah. go check out his book. You can pre-order on Amazon. We'll put links. Uh, when below. does it Thanks, come man. out, out? When does it uh, actually get? Sometime in, in September. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait to read it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Later, buddy. Right. Bye. Right, Take care. All right, I gotta show this. I got. I'm sorry. I've been thinking about. I, I. I seriously did go down a rabbit hole. This is in 2004 when the country voted between Viktor Yushchenko and, and Viktor Yanukovych. I cannot tell um, those two men apart. Well, they're both named Victor, and and uh, their last only names one are was extremely Victor. similar. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Victor Y. Victor Yanu or Victor Yush. Right. Now, I just want to point this out. All this, this, I'm using my mouse. I wish, wait, if I use my mouse over here, do you guys see it on the screen? Yeah, you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. check that out. All right. This whole, this whole, I'm learning all this. This whole Western part of, of Ukraine, um, a lot of this was like, uh, became Ukraine. It's a lot of Poles. A lot, it became Ukraine uh, during the, during World War II um, and, and right after World War II. So it wasn't really originally Ukrainian. Um, but if you look, this guy, Viktor Yanukovych, he was he was supported by Russia. And I don't think he was a stooge or anything, but like the these people on this side tend to be more ethnically Russian. And you can see, hey, look, the ethnical ethnic Russians voted for Viktor Yanukovych. The Russian guy. Okay. Right. And this guy, Viktor Yushchenko, Yushchenko was his so his wife was Katerina Yushchenko, who worked for the US Department of State. Viktor Yushchenko um was a uh, I will I will say Nazi or Nazi sympathizer or nationalist. He when he um he, without going into details, he eventually did get to be president, but he didn't win this election. When he got to be president, uh the last thing he did before he departed was uh name St Stefan Bandera, who was an actual Nazi from World War II, who many of the, the Ukrainian Nazi parties have uh, played, paid tribute to and, and, and uh, you know, view as a hero. He named that guy as a hero of Ukraine before he left. Then Yanukovych came in power and undid it. And he was like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. You, you cannot do that. Um, so, but this is how Ukraine is not this unified place of a bunch of Ukrainians. It's a bunch of Poles, a bunch of Russians, obviously some people who've probably have generations and generations been, been in Ukraine, but it's not that clear cut of a, of a place. And so in, in 2004, you had this election, this guy won Yanukovych won, but NATO didn't like it. And the West didn't like it because they wanted this Nazi supporter, um, so they challenged the election. They have another election afterwards. They said it's probably illegitimate. They had another one. And that one, this guy won. Um, and that eventually he didn't do well. Um, and Yanukovych was, I think, elected then after that. Um, I think it was Yanukovych that was elected after that. And then in 2014, that's when you hear that phone call between Victoria Newland, who was working for Joe Biden, she's a, you know, working for the State Department, um, and, and Jeffrey P Pyatt, I guess she wasn't working for the State Department, she's working directly for Joe Biden. Um, when you hear that phone call, they're talking about three people that they want to be in power. One of them is Arseny Yatsenyuk, who she talks about, that guy, again, from the right sector, um, like, well, Fatherland Party, like, totally related to all the Nazis, and two other people, Klitsch and Tiani Hook, both also Nazi right wing people. So it, the U.S. orchestrated this in 2014, and they backed they backed the nationalists because they want to make sure that the Russians don't get power here. It's just, I, and again, I'm not arguing that 
Putin is great. I just, I think this narrative is just so false that the narrative that it's, it's like, so oh, bad man Putin and good man Ukraine. It's like, it's not, right. there's a bunch of mess here. No one, like both sides are good. Ukrainians are caught in the middle of all of this crap. And, we, and we've and we got this false dichotomy of basically right-wing nationalism and and pro-Russian stuff is the only two sides. Yeah, it's, I mean, in any country, things are kind of murky and I, to, to knee jerk like we've done, literally, and Lou was kind of making a joke when we first started the show that uh, he doesn't really know and he's, you know, like doesn't, right. but that's, that's the right I answer. was sort of outraged that within the first few days I was expected to take a side. And I, I think I tweeted, um, I don't know what to think about Ukraine, but I know what I'm supposed to think. <laughs> like within two or three days, I knew exactly what I was supposed to think. Right. And I didn't know enough about anything about it to have an opinion. And I honestly, I still don't. Yeah. But I'm starting to see, I, I'm more clear on the lies than I was when it first started. I know more about Ukraine than I ever wanted to know. And I'm sort of sickened that I'm, my attention is necessarily diverted that I have to kind of follow the, um, what I'm being forced to pay attention to because they're, they're making it my business. Um, especially yeah. risking war with Russia, you know, I know. and, uh, so, for I, us, American war way. with Russia. Yeah. Why not? What? Yeah. Well, Putin's a bad guy. Well, what? <laughs> like, I don't care. There's a lot of bad guys in the world. He's definitely yeah. not the worst. Throw a dart at the map. The or, person or running if that anything, country is a bad guy, basically. Or if anything, he might be <laughs> one of the worst. But who cares? I mean, if you're like raiding dictators, are, uh, what? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Grow yeah. up, everybody. There's a yeah. lot of bad people in the world, and he's one of them. But like you said, I don't know. Even when you like take history, just look at history. Um, do we, do we call Catherine the great? Do we think of her as like some evil person, even though she probably did a lot of the same stuff Putin did because back then everybody had a dictator and you had to be ruthless and you, it, it, that was just how it works. That's how dictatorships work. So this whole freedom thing is new, not yeah. the dictatorship. And in this grand scheme of dictatorships, like you said, he's been in charge of a country for 30 years. It's not doing too bad. He's always been very pro-Russia. He's not, you know, a weak-minded, weak. I mean, he might be. He's a dictator, but he's not a he's not making as goes on. He's smart and strategic, and he seems to want to protect his country. Because he because he's in it, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's like his. Well, it belongs look, to him. He he could have started uh, World War Three for thirty years and didn't. Like he hasn't been imperialistic. Like we haven't yeah. been talking about Russia invade this country and that country and blah blah blah. And we got to keep yeah. stopping Russia because they keep invading. And he's they keep, not like, running Estonia and Lithuania and Poland. Like he's right. not. He hasn't tried to reestablish. They, they're saying that he's his the re, the whole reason he's doing this. Is because he's a crazy Hitler guy who just wants to reestablish the lands uh, that were that formerly belonged to Russia, the right. USSR. I don't really see any evidence of that. I don't. And I, I think he has been provoked. But if you look at some of the great Russian czars that we consider great, Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, you know, then you have Ivan the Terrible, who everybody realized was terrible and vicious. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like there's a, they're all it's right there in his name, so we know he's terrible. But, yeah, I don't know anything about it. I mean, maybe that's <laughs> propaganda, right? I'd have to literally go back and check. Is he worse than Catherine? I don't know. Maybe she was pretty and charming, so it's not as bad. But she took she expanded Russia, so right. that means she invaded countries, independent countries, right. and um, the people before the Russians were they were being basically run by the Turks. The Turks uh, controlled what Russia did for a long time. 
they were really vicious. So, I mean, just grow up and get like it exists and we don't want to have that happen in our country. And by diverting our attention and following the narrative, we're helping these really vicious people take more and more control of our country. Yeah. So we need to like, look at home. We've got big problems. That's, I, yeah. I mean, and that's, I, we can just, to, we can put a bow on the Russia thing by circ and Ukraine thing by circling back to what you said at the very beginning, that UFC guy was like, look, I don't like, I think the, the right answer is, in general, like, I'm not sure what to think about this whole thing, but I'm not going to go fight for some other. I will fight for my country. I will defend my land. But don't start telling me to get into your geopolitical chess game and risk World War Three. Like, that's not a thing that I'm going to do. And, you know, I, I can a lot of people are like, well, you're a Putin apologist for saying all this stuff. It's like, look, no one is saying Putin's a good guy. The point no. is not that Putin's a good guy. Both sides can have problems. Both sides can be bad. And even one know, side can be worse than the other side. Yes. You, maybe the, the Ukrainians. Worse. I don't know. Maybe Putin's worse. Maybe the Ukrainians had more freedom. Yeah, sure. Maybe. Um, and maybe but, they were a real democracy. Does anybody really believe that when we can't even control our own election here in the United States and be sure about it? Right. And the place well, is and, obviously corrupt and obviously being right. used as a playground by our establishment elite corrupt elites yeah. with the with the whole biden hunter biden thing and i heard recently i didn't verify this but i heard that pelosi and romney and someone john Kerry's all their kids are in positions over there and working in ukraine in positions right yeah, um, I mean, it. well, John Kerry it, it, was how they get their money laundered he was the secretary of state at the time of the 2014 revolution. Jeffrey Pryatt, who had that phone call with Victoria Newland, worked for John Kerry. So I'm sure he yeah. was all up and That's, involved. In all they all stuff. know money. Yeah. United States tax dollars go to Ukraine and then they're getting it's right. getting sent out to our politicians in their right. pockets. That's how they're getting money out of the United States because we have laws and stuff where they can't do this and they can't do that. But somehow Pelosi is like worth a hundred million dollars, you know, right. I mean, right. come on everybody. Yeah. So this is their little playground and it is. It, and they're asking us, they're not asking us to fight. Although maybe if you're in the military, they might eventually, but they're asking us to fund it yeah. and support it. And and they're not asking, they're taking our money and tax dollars as they do by force so that they can go gamble with, by their own admission, a crazy man who could start World War III by nuking us. Yeah. No, thank you. And there really isn't any self-interest for American citizens no. in this in this conflict, in this situation. Mm -mm. And you can have feelings about it and you can say, this is what's bothering me about this like either or thing. I can care about i hate seeing people hurt like that does sure. that does affect me um i have a child especially like the scenes of like the kids and mothers leaving the husband oh my god i mean it's heartbreaking and then knowing that they may never see him again and what that would do That's to them horrible. and those little children i mean it's heartbreaking also the the russian soldiers dying similar situation that's somebody's son or father. Well, also, let's let's point out Ukraine is not allowing fighting age males to leave. So if you're a dad and yeah. you've got your kids and you're trying to get out of the country, it's forced conscription, which by the way is immoral. <laughs> like, yeah. So well, let's assume like, they all want to fight. Um, well, but they don't. I can feel all sad. Fight. They're for not them. allowed out. And I can even think, oh, they're they're a democracy, and Putin's a dictatorship. You know, democracy ish. Whereas Putin is a dictatorship. I feel sorry for the, the people dying and being hurt and having their, their neighborhoods destroyed and communities. Um, I still can say as an American, it doesn't have anything to do with my country and we should not be involved. Right. Um, so absolutely. I don't understand why. I don't know. It really bothers me. This idea that we have to take a side and we have to literally invest our money and our soldiers in this. Um, yeah. And the people it, who are on this moral high, they're on a moral, uh, 
they think they're on the moral high ground. I'm like, you have to do this. Blah, 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 blah. We have to like, where are you for all the other bad things happening in the world? Like, I don't want to be the police of the world. Yeah. Go be the co- go fund your own organization to be the world cop. I don't want to be the world it would cop. Bankrupt I want us. We would have nothing here. left if we took on yes. all of the stuff. And not only that, every time we do, we screw it up. So I mean, yeah. Can we just if we have the principle of self interest applied to foreign policy, which used to be the standard, the Jeffersonian uh, doctrine or whatever, mm-hmm. um, stay out of it. America used to do that. And now you go, oh, are you an isolationist? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, come Maybe on. Maybe not economically, but militarily, absolutely. Militarily, I am absolutely, 100%. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, it, it, the whole thing is, is frustrating and it's just low resolution. It's a low resolution way to look at the world. Like, here's a bad thing that I'm whipped up out about. It's, yeah. there's other bad things, but this is the one that we need to care about. And you're a apologist for a dictator if you don't do blah, 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 blah. It's like, you know what? It's a lot of intimidation it's, tactics. It's so stupid. If it's you so really dumb. sat someone down and said, what do you really care about? You know, um, what really matters to you right now? Where do you want to put your time, money, and effort? Would it be Ukraine or would it be your own country sliding into dictatorship at like a rapid pace? Or, you know what? Here's an example. I just got my hair cut yesterday. I'm sitting in the salon. I there's maybe there's maybe 25 people in there. And it was kind of, it's a very small place. Every conversation that I could hear was about gas prices and the economy. People right. are freaking out about gas prices and now, shortages what are they here in California and now? prices. What was, oh my god, like, what's like the latest you've seen. I think I've seen almost $7 wow. here here near the water. Um, yeah, I think six I have and a half like bucks. Something. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And, and this affects especially working people like the, the lower and middle class people when you, uh, it literally affects their, whether or not they want to drive to visit a family member or, yeah. um, or drive to work. I mean, it, it charges them more to drive to work or, you know, wherever they're going. I mean, they're going to start rationing driving, well, just which is exactly Tesla, what they want. Sonny. I mean, oh, I, I feel like I'm being manipulated and I, I'm trying not to become a total conspiracy th- theorist. But when all of these things start coming true, and like I said earlier, when they're writing it in a book and they're having seminars, they want us on a digital currency. They want to go to pure energy, uh, different kind of energy which we'll have to be completely reliant on China for um, if we're not doing oil and gas. This is where they're pushing us against our will. Yeah. And this is what they want. Um, Somehow I just have to plan. It's stupid otherwise. It's too stupid and destructive to not be a plan. I know Biden has dementia, but nobody. Yeah, I, I mean, there is stupidity that happens sometimes. But I mean, I don't. I, again, I don't know if it's a consistently. Huge... Like he yeah, comes into maybe. office, bans the Keystone Pipeline, does all this environmentalist stuff. Next thing you know, we're fighting with Russia. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's too dumb. And and the maybe who benefits? Who benefits? So. Yeah. Well, not the American people, and. Uh... But what yeah, the American I, people care about is is the economy is being tanked, and they yep. know it. Yep. Well, I mean, I think part of the, if you want to get conspiratorial, part of the Great Reset, they would rather have us not have cars, rely more on public transportation and companies that own cars that we have to rent as a service somehow, that we have, like yeah. Ubers and whatever that we use but they don't like the idea of of us. I'm sure they're against. Well, I know they're against the idea of everyone owning cars. So they don't like they don't like that in the first place. Yeah. Um, that only so works for like city people. Look. Right. But they don't care about country people because most of the people are in the city and they're the ones who vote. Yeah. I can't get well, anywhere. We don't that, have Uber. I, I, I grew up in the city. I, I didn't take the bus just because it was available to me. <laughs> like I want my own damn car. I want to go to work when I want to go to work. And I, you know. I like 
doing my own thing in my own car. I occasionally enjoy taking a train or a bus if I need to like read or relax or something. But, you know, yeah, I guess if I lived in New York, I, I would be, I wouldn't want to drive in that. Right. But I grew up in Minneapolis in the city. I love driving. And we had a yeah. great bus system. I took the bus sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, New York, I just New York, want the choice. Car, I'm right? a fucking yeah. American. I want the goddamn choice. I don't want to be nudged into public transportation. And that is their whole way of doing business these days, these governments. Their whole philosophy is nudging. Mm -hmm. That's how they get away with it. Yep. They move you slowly and slowly in that, you know... With a cattle prod, but and you think you're making the choice? Oh well, I can't afford gas. I'm gonna do this. It's my choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I am mean, so I'm I'm a little keyed up. <laughs> no, it's good. I mean, I'm I I I don't know what's gonna happen with the gas thing. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't. What happens if gas stays super high for a really long time? It's got to have a major impact. Like. People are going to have, to, they're going to have to change their behavior. They will. I mean, people to. already are. And with the supply shortages that have been happening really since COVID, but then escalated once Biden took office um, and did whatever he did that. And then he blamed that on the trucker convoy in Canada. Like mm -hmm. the, the supply crisis have been going on for a year. Can't a uh, trucker convoy one week. It's a trucker convoy. And now gas prices are high. Oh, Putin. It's Putin. Yeah. But wait, doesn't it take a little time before commodities change their prices when you buy them and then you see that at the pump, right? There's like a slight lag, more than just a couple days, you know? Especially Maybe this has Russian something to do with your policies. Like yeah. We didn't really buy Russian gas before. So the the way that Russian gas would affect the price would have to go through um, like the, the mechanism would be by affecting the general price of barrels of oil. Yeah. Uh, and then having that impact us. Cause we, even before he quote banned buying oil from Russia, like I think the, the previous month we hadn't bought any, like we don't buy much oil from Russia anyway. Yeah. So it's, so not it's more like, of a macro oil commodity, yeah, the, global yeah, oil the commodity price, prices. Yeah. And that would have had to, that takes time to filter. It does right. because people buy that and then they make gas out of it and right. then it gets distributed around at a certain price and purchased by the gas stations. I mean, this all takes time. It's not a two day process. So within two days, he was blaming the gas prices on the war in Ukraine and the, and then, yeah, it's just, we're just being played all the time. It's really hard to, and I think the censorship is making us feel like everybody believes it or somehow you feel alone in that you're not accepting it. Right. But there's nothing else there that says that's questioning. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I felt like it was a really good sign that, you know, I remember when COVID happened, very few people were kind of in like seeing the propaganda at first. And it was, you know, it was a process. You saw people coming around over the course of two years going, oh, my God, all of this is a sham. And some of them, it took a year and some of them, it took a year and a half. But a lot of people came around to seeing that they were being lied to constantly. And this time, a lot of people immediately were like, no, man, this smells really fishy. What's going on? I don't trust these people, <laughs> you know? So, right, so yeah. I definitely think that, and, and by people, I mean, I'm talking about people who matter, who are the ones, you know, opinion makers, people who have successful shows, um, who have a following, are, were immediately questioning it. Yeah. Whereas I yeah. didn't see that with COVID. No, it was I mean, really you're fringed when COVID happened, and now it's more mainstream right. Even the the Democrat right, you know, the the socialist right, the people who are Bernie Sanders supporters who are all like calling out the establishment Democrats. Yeah, they were really skeptical. Um, yeah, so that I thought that was good. Yeah, you're reminding me of something. So the. 
you saw that that it was revealed recently how much that the government paid a bunch of money for Beverly. I think that article was you might you have it up. The government paid a bunch of money to influencers and media to push COVID propaganda. I did see that. Um, yeah, you saw that, right? Yeah. Um, and I just yeah. saw I just saw something else show up in the, today, um, which I totally didn't. Uh, I mean, it's the do same remember, kind of thing. Do you remember seeing right. that Greta Thunberg was kicked out of a country and, and because um, they had proof that she had taken money to foment and support a revolutionary group within, in that nation? I can't remember no. much about it, that. but she is taking money to take sides and, and do propaganda. That was a couple years ago. Wow. No, I missed that. So, yeah, here's the article about the federal government paid hundreds of media companies to advertise the COVID-19 vaccines, while those same outlets provided positive coverage of the vaccines. We don't have to read the whole thing, but like uh, ABC, CBS, NBC, TV news stations, Fox News, CNN, NBC, MSNBC, New York Post, Los Angeles Times, Washington Post. Also, it says like media influencers and stuff like they they went nuts. They went nuts on this. Um, so we did, we got, we, we felt like we were the only weird ones asking questions because everyone was being paid behind the scenes to yeah. talk about this as if obviously we're the idiots for asking any questions and the vaccines are great and awesome. Similarly, yeah. similarly, I just saw this today. Oops. Similarly, look at this Washington post article. The white house is briefing TikTok stars about the war in Ukraine. <laughs> So they are they're going after social media influences influencers to push their narrative. I don't know how this isn't clearly propaganda to people. It, when did it become normal or like oh the US government is propagandizing its citizens? Like when did that just become something Americans are like of course they are. <laughs> yeah, <after laughs> you know? People are dumb. I I think it I used think to it be happened a scandal. overtly. I think it happened overtly because um, th this is, I mean, I guess this does relate to Ukraine as well, but in 2016, they were so, they had TDS. They were so upset about Trump and they called all of Trump supporters deplorables and the Trumps of the deplorables were characterized as low IQ slack jawed inbreds who didn't understand anything and needed, they didn't know it was for their own good. They didn't know how to do anything for their own good. They needed to be managed, controlled, and, um, you know, take, taken care of, but also fixed. They're wrong. They're stupid. They, they're, they're not, they're subhuman. They, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They're too dumb to run their own lives or to choose that. That was the, that was the mentality about the, the Trump deplorables. And I think, I think once they've decided that there was a, a half the population was that, and once that became an acceptable way to characterize half of the population, then suddenly treating them with disrespect by propagandizing to them sounds like a perfectly acceptable idea because, yeah. well, we wouldn't have had to, but you got, you know, you know, there's all those deplorables out there. They're, they're retards. We need to tell them looks. And so that's why, that's why it justifies it. And, and by the way, how this relates to Ukraine, I think the, I think the Russian people right now are stand-ins for deplorables. Putin is a stand-in for Trump. That's why they're so pissed off. They're really angry because um, tr they've, they've taken all of their anger at Trump, projected it onto Putin. There's already that relation there. And they're treating the Russian people like the deplorables. They're cutting them off from everything, blah, blah, blah. They can't, you know, we can't have them on social media and, and all that kind of stuff. I think this is a, this war is an outlet for leftist rage against Trump and Trump. That's supporters. interesting. And it's interesting how the cognitive dissidents you have to be living with, or in Ayn Rand's words, the evasion <laughs> to yes. have watched the Russian collusion thing and, and have really, even after it was completely discredited, to think that Putin and Trump have some relationship. Right. Um, especially given his actions, which 
I don't know. I mean, say what you will about Trump, but we had a pretty good economy and pretty good foreign policy, a lot of peace in the world. Um, I don't know. It's yeah. crazy. So, yeah, I think that's probably true. Uncle it's Sam like, pointing at you is propaganda. I guess that's true. Uncle Sam pointing at you was propaganda. But that was put out by the government directly. I don't know how much they paid. Maybe they, maybe they did pay journalists to write about is it. Is it war. more icky when they're mm. coming at you sideways? I think like, so. Yeah. Because it's it, not because transparent. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. You don't know who's behind the message. You think that all these people have this opinion, but they're really just paid to have it. They don't yeah. really have that opinion. So it's fake. It's, it's more of a, sh a scam. Yeah. It's more yeah. of a, it's dishonest and it isn't transparent. And the government is we, the people, we have a right to know who's talking to us and what they're saying. And we have a right to see all these documents. I I'm so tired of, we have just evolved into this place where Americans are infantilized. We're not allowed to see what's happening. We're it it's normal for the government not to be transparent at all. Yep. You know, the, why don't we have the John F. Kennedy Commission documents? Why don't we have those right. available to look right. at? Like what what or even the 9/11 Commission documents with all the redacted stuff. That is absolutely wrong. This right. government is run by us. So we deserve the information 100%. No, it's not. And we're treated like children. <laughs> well, you can't see this. You wouldn't know how to analyze it. Right. You know, in California, if I go get, I have this illness, so I, I'm always dealing with health issues. I go, I get uh, labs drawn, you know, blood drawn and stuff. In California, I that I don't have a right to the information from my own blood until the doctor has looked at it and agreed that I can see it, or two weeks, because they don't want <laughs> me to freak out. So at two weeks, then I can go on to like the lab website and see the tests. And it's even worse when you go into the hospitals here. They'll draw your labs like every, sorry, I've been in the hospital a lot. <laughs> so this is, a, but it's the same mentality. I'm in the hospital. I'm the patient. I'm having an acute problem, say. They draw my labs. Can I have a copy of that? No. You can't. No. The doctor would have to give you that. And we, they don't even have a process. You don't have self-ownership that you are, in fact, livestock on a tax farm. Yeah. And that's how they treat like that little micro example of these are laws like I don't have a right to my own blood tests, let alone to see the information the federal government is creating. So it's it, it, it it's so un-American. I think I think we have a naive and nostalgic view of what America is. I mean, I mean, and I can get I can read the Constitution and and read the Declaration of Independence and the Anti-Federalist Papers and and the Federalist Papers too. But I I can you can read that kind of stuff in history and go, oh yeah, look look at all the great things America is based on. But like that's yeah. not what we are at all. We well, are a, not a, anymore. We're, like, we're a dictatorship of we're a dictatorship. So actually, we're a fascist dictatorship. I was thinking about this. I think what happened was, so we all know how dictatorships work. Dictatorship, dictator does what he wants. We had democracy come along. I mean, not that the ancient Greeks didn't have it. We had the, the form, the constitutional republic in the US and that came along. And for a little while, maybe, maybe for a little while, there was some sort of check on the power and of, of what government officials could get away with. But eventually, yeah. eventually the people vested in the system cracked that nut of figuring out how to control people on mass and once they did that we are a horde of zombies being led by someone who's chanting magical spells or whatever like they're they're controlling us and it, it's not it's a dictatorship of whoever's controlling the mass of zombies and there might be fighting over there might be behind the scenes fighting over controlling the zombies but it's a small group of people fighting over controlling the zombies. And they win at the end of the day. We're not part of this 
because very few of us are trying to even trying to think independently. So we're not part of this at all. We're just a tool that different parties are using to bludgeon each other to try and get control. So I kind of think this is worse than a dictatorship because it's less overt. Yeah. And like you said, with Putin, at least he cares about Russia because it's in his self-interest to care about Russia because mm -hmm. it's his. And when you have a king who's, you know, been handed down a country that he's in charge of, <laughs> like there's something cleaner about that, like you said. And I would rather have a single head that even even a mediocre king is better than a somebody was comparing um was joking that you know it's kind of a sick meme where all these russian dictators had been murdered in march or something and one of them was czar alexander and i'm like dude that guy was murdered by a communist mob thugs not even a mob of thugs including his wife and little kids little girls and he was just a mediocre king. You know, he wasn't the worst guy in the world. And it's kind of at, at a time when there were kings in every other country. And then what happened to the Russian people after they liberated themselves from this king? They had the worst possible system on the planet ever. All right. The most right. murderous, despicable, and you didn't have anyone to go after because it was spread, right? There's no Just like it is here. That's the way it goes. Yep. There's no accountability. You can't really get at anybody. It's just, it's everywhere around you. And that is worse than even a king can be held accountable. Um, well, if you look at even Louis the Sixteenth is another great example of a king who was mediocre. He wasn't particularly bad. He yeah. was trying to compromise and whatever. I mean, I, I don't think it was particularly effective, but he wasn't. He wasn't like a tyrant. He he wasn't like his grandfather or whatever. Like he was, he was a mediocre king. Yeah, and he's the guy that the <laughs> French Revolution beheaded and right. like, and then they had <laughs> absolute chaos and murder and blood in the streets for years. Yeah a horror that people couldn't yeah. wait to get out of, which is why they got Napoleon. And so I right. think, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of analysis and fear about the right leading us into this strong man kind yep. of uh, type of dictatorship, which is different. And I am less afraid of that than I am of what's coming to be honest, but I do see why that's a natural reaction. And for those yeah. of us who would rather um, have freedom <laughs> and individualism, I don't know how we do it. I mean, it's kind of like that. If we allow the left to continue this gray mass of communism, we're going to end up with a strong man because that's the only person who could defeat this kind of thing. Cause you just have to say, I don't care who you guys are. <laughs> like, I'm not right. trying to figure out who's responsible. I'm just going to smash you all. Yeah. And only a King can do something like that. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. American people that we do. There's enough of us that do have who, who have the value of freedom and individualism kind of baked in that, will resist that. But I was saying to somebody else the other day, even the American revolution with all those enlightenment ideas and everybody kind of on board with self self government, George Washington could have been our King and it almost happened. So even with like, all right, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they wanted him so to be easily could have tipped there. We yep. were on the threshold of that. So it wasn't like a, it wasn't easy to end up with a Republic of free states, you know, and George Washington probably would have been a good king. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the answer is. That's why the when I look at the U.S., the only thing I can think of is like I want to get on a lifeboat with other individualists and freedom oriented people and like secede somehow so we can do something because I don't I don't want to be in a strong man king situation and I don't right. want to be in communism like both of those really, really are not ideal. Right. Um, but no, they aren't. <sighs> we, we literally had the ideal, I, I think, except we didn't, keep I think it, we, though. we lost control of, of the local control.
of the, you know, the states. There were so many different things that were put in, again, slowly put into place that eroded the state sovereignty, um, the, the way we were set up to begin with. And, and at least think, with a state government, yeah. you're closer to that. It's really hard to be so disconnected no. from the leadership. So. I, if I were going to rewrite constitutions and stuff, I would, one of the things I would definitely add is an explicit right for territories to secede. Yeah. Um, Cause it holds people accountable. Right. It's like, well, they don't like what you're doing. They're yeah. leaving. And you, it's like, it's, it's very explicit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm not convinced that. Does that mean you're pro slavery? Right, that's what people say when I'm you a mention it. You, and a pro slavery. That's what when I you am say now, something yeah. like that. They go, Oh, so, so the civil war was Lincoln did a bad thing. Right. Yeah. Maybe no, he I, did. I, I mean, not that I'm for slavery, but it eroded the sense of the states having autonomy over their citizens. Well, and that it did a couple things. So it set a precedent that you can't secede, which is a yeah. horrible precedent. Right. It, um, he, it also justified, this is when greenbacks came into use. It did, like they took over the money system yeah. and introduced taxes yeah. because you can't have the war without taxes. So they First did that. First income tax. Yeah. That's right. So you could argue, and no one knows how history would have turned out, but you could argue if the North had said, all right, go do your thing, but we're going to use economics. We're not going to trade with you. And we're going to like, we're going to, and we're going to try and subvert your slavery, your system of yeah, slavery. We're going to rescue gonna, like, the slaves. We're going to somehow yeah. fund that's, pulling them out that's of there. What we're about. Yeah. Cause, cause it didn't matter. We don't care if you want to secede, but we do care that you have slaves. So we're going to work. We're going to work to get, to end your slavery in whatever way we can with, you know, and, but, I, I think you could argue that maybe there would have been a better way. I don't know. Um, and and people a lot can't of people wrap their heads around that. Be, yeah, but people slaughter. get all upset when you do that. You're like, well, hey, wait a minute. Yes, you you're not allowed to, to have nuance it. with respect to the Civil War, just like you're not allowed to have nuance with Ukraine. I mean, we've been, for 100 years, we've been spoon-fed these ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But... And again, it's this black and white thing of you either for the Civil War, the way it was fought and the way the whole motivations around it, or you're for uh, against or wait, if you're for it, you're for you're against slavery. And if you're not, then you're for slavery. It's just totally absurd yeah, like, well, and shallow yeah. thinking. It's it's stupid and shallow. I, I completely and completely agree. But you know, the most amazing thing about that whole income tax that they passed during the civil war is that they repealed it. I know. Like, how did that <laughs> happen? It had been set. Well, didn't the court reject <laughs> something? And then they said they passed an amendment later. I, think I don't know, but it took it. them 50 years to get another income tax. Yeah. Yeah, it did. And now, and because we have a, we, we have an income tax and the federal reserve and the, you know, I don't know if people know states had their own currencies prior to the civil war. Like, because we have a, a centralized currency with a neo-government, but not actually government organization uh, in control, tightly in bed with the government, we can afford, we can print money and have wars as much as we want now. Yeah. Like, we can tax people, we can, yeah, we can do whatever we want. Let me, let me read a couple super chats before we, uh, I, I want to read G-Man. Uh, I think I thought Julian was already a member. Maybe he just re-upped his membership. But uh, welcome, he G man. 12, He hit twelve months. Oh, it's the his full year. anniversary. Congrats! All right, G -Man. welcome, G man. He says, "Quit de de dead naming Metaverse, Carter. Facebook is no more. I, Facebook is a product still. The company's Metaverse, just like Google's a product, and Alphabet is the company name. But thank you for the dead quit naming. Quit dead reference. naming, Carter. I know. Um." STE York says Trump and collusion versus Hitler Biden's laptop. This looks just like a Democrat versus Republican war using Europe as the playing field. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I don't agree with that is I see the Republicans and Democrats as the same group. Yeah. And they're united in this. Them. Yeah. They're absolutely united in this. And, you know, they're all getting, they're all, I mean, Romney's kid works in Ukraine, just like, 
Carrie's kid. Right. All of those establishment Republicans are somehow involved in the Ukraine corruption. And um, so I don't, I honestly, I'm not super clear on what the hell they're doing and why they're so into it. I'm, except the, the companies that make war stuff uh, were getting, you know, a lot of money from Afghanistan and then that ended and they need a new place. And I don't know. I mean, maybe I, it's so hard. You can't know. Yeah. It's, it. I was going to say it, it's really hard to untangle because there's so many international relationships between yeah. elites, agendas, things that they want to do strategies. They may or may not have people trying to clean up messes that they probably were involved in and made in some way. Like you, like it's yeah. a, it's everybody a wants an American in their pocket because we pay for everything. And uh, you know, Trump, like I said, was the first politician who ever questioned NATO. How is that even possible that he's the first one when it was supposed to be disbanded? And why hasn't this been a thing that I've ever heard anyone challenge? Uh, you know, because he was an outsider. Yep. Well, I mean, that, I think that's why they hated him. Because right. he was asking, he was going to come in and as an outsider and ask questions that they didn't want. Just answer. remember that the Republicans hated him as much as the Democrats. Yep. Mm -hmm. George Bush spoke out. I mean, he never spoke out about a leftist when he was in office. He never said anything bad about the Democrats. He never said anything bad about Barack Obama, arguably one of the most radical presidents we've ever had, who was making a mess of foreign policy in the world. But when Trump was elected, oh, my gosh, worst person in the world. Yep. According to George Bush. So what side is he on exactly? You see, they, they all hang out together. I mean, you've yeah. plenty of pictures with the Clintons and, and the Bushes together and and blah, blah, blah. And there's plenty of, you know, you saw that. I'm sure you saw the Lindsey Graham thing the other day where he's in the car praising Biden, saying how awesome Biden was. There's not a better person on the planet than Biden or whatever. Like you just they're all. Yeah. It's easy to be a good person when you have the mentality of a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. He's a great <laughs> puppet. Uh, he's, he's so sweet now that he can't think or do anything. Yeah, we like him a lot Did you now. see that Jill Biden is going over to wherever he's going to, you know, have meetings about Ukraine? Jill Biden's going with him and she's been named his emotional emissary. I'm not joking. <laughs> that actually is real. <laughs> They didn't want to say nurse, but same thing. <laughs> Maybe she's in charge. <laughs> no way. No, I don't know. Uh, STE York also writes, India fired a rocket into Pakistan today. I saw that, but in fairness, India said, oops. So that's fine. Um, or did they say, oops? Yeah, they did that. Did you do it again? I can't. <laughs> Oh man, my dad really doesn't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that at all. <sighs> um, all right. I mean, I think I'm it's gonna been get in big trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, because you're a racist, though. It's fine. You're already a racist. Um, just look Connor, at you. Got to be a it's cultural. Too. This <laughs> move is not because of skin color. Was it because it, of it, anyone who thinks it is is being a racist? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Um, At least all you're right, well, a thank normal you. person, Sunny. <laughs> I'm a normal oh, person. I know. Remember, I said that last week. Oh yes, that, that was, was you. Megan That's right. I remember. <laughs> that. that was you. <laughs> I that remember. was you who said only white people are normal. We you were mentioning that it was somebody else. <laughs> I did. I think you're exaggerating. You were the commentary. <laughs> the, I know the, the commenter who said. <laughs> Oh, we can't go there. Poor Carter. I know. And then I tried and then Poor I tried Carter. to defend it by like talking about bell curves. You and, were really trying to defend, know. yeah. Big, big, big uh, yeah. uh you really stuck your foot in it. <laughs> I did. I did. And then the other um, one. That was a good yeah. time. With Thomas and me there. I know. At least Thomas and I are buddies, so he'll just probably Yeah, Carter hates me, so he doesn't care. Yeah. That's why I make fun or of him. Or maybe he I, knows I, you already hate him. I'm not sure. Which <laughs> that you know. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, Sonny, last remind Puff everyone Feffy. where they can find you. Last, last Puff Puff Feffy. Feffy. 
This is. Well, we will be streaming well, Monday and Friday run. at the same Congratulations time. Congratulations so. on a good run and a good show. And thank you. Thanks for helping out. I'm sure yeah. your future. I want. I want to hear this name that is maybe. So the name not that okay. is tentative on Monday that it's. I. I Beverly doesn't like it either. Right? I didn't say I didn't like it. I said that all I said was yeah. I think I that could tell. work. And then he's like, well, I don't that know. That wasn't high enough praise. Oh, yeah, that so could work. We're switching to. We're making it into two shows. We're doing a Monday show that's a little bit more serious and about news, and a Friday show that's a little bit more lighthearted. And the Monday show is tentatively called Narrative Dissonance, but I, I don't know that that will. Are you saying it that way? Stay. Narrative dissonance. Narrative dissonance. Sorry, there you oh, go. But it's yeah. the idea is we'll have people from alternate media come on and talk about stories that are being ignored or how we're being lied to by mainstream and like have kind of a roundtable discussion about that. So, um, and then Friday is mostly in Beverly's lap, so I'll, I'll let her not say anything or say whatever she wants oh. about it. Uh, yeah, um, because Carter can't do fun, obviously. Um, I will be hosting mm -hmm. a new show and we're bringing back, we had a show before called Token Minority Report. So we're going to, but we're revamping it. And I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, but um, hopefully. It's genetically we'll modified Token Minority Report. And I heard the producer will be awesome. That's all I'm going to say. I will not speak to that. <laughs> all right. Um, well, good luck with those. Thanks for having me on today, you guys. Remind Thank everyone you. where they can find you. Uh, House of Sunny at YouTube and um, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at Sunny Lelman. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sunny. Thanks, everyone. We will see you on Monday at 11 a.m. And uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. Uh, I need to get the credits up. Bye. <laughs> Happy Kefefe. <laughs>